Hi, and welcome along to another video. This time, we'll go through a summary of the UK's weather and climate modification activity. Starting in the 1940s and then coming up to date into the modern era. Before we start though, a quick word about the Substack page I have started. When you arrive on the page you will see there is a landing page before you go to the articles. You can either subscribe, or hit the button that says no thanks. Go to article. That will take you to the articles page where you will find, free to read summaries about many countries, governments, projects, operations, and organizations. And you can also find paid subscriber reports covering recent news. A yearly subscription works out at about $2 a month or less than two UK pounds. Otherwise there is a monthly subscription fee of $5, so about $1 or £1 per week. Thanks. Now let's start first with the UK's weather modification activity and then we'll cover the climate modification. It would be acceptable to state that it is almost impossible to convince anyone in the UK or elsewhere without weather and climate modification knowledge that the UK's weather is being modified. Traditionally, globally, most people think the UK just has bad weather. The bad weather concept is promoted in the media and also in films etc. People who visit the UK think it is just how the UK's weather is. Early activity. In April 1993 Lieutenant Colonel Angus Watt of the Canadian Air Force wrote a paper entitled, Weather Modification, The Ultimate Weapon, which was a research report submitted to the faculty at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, USA in fulfillment of a curriculum requirement. Lieutenant Colonel Watt was advised by Dr. Armin Ludwig. What states that considerable technological and scientific progress in weather modification has been made since the Second World War, to the point where it deserves serious consideration, especially in light of the potentially catastrophic consequences of its use. The paper written by what focuses on the deliberate use of weather modification techniques by the military. Fog Dissipation, 1940 Fog dissipation was attempted in support of airfield activities during the Battle of Britain between July and October 1940. Ground-based thermal systems, called FIDO which stands for, FOG, Intensive, Dispersal of, were installed at 15 OAF facilities. The system was a series of pipes stretched along the runways which had aviation fuel pumped through them which then exited through small holes and was ignited. The FIDO system was said to assist with the landing of 2,500 aircraft by the end of the war. In other words, it successfully dissipated the fog and cleared the view of the runway on a regular basis. Rain Enhancement, 1949-1952 In August 1949, the Midlands Sunday Mercury and Northern Ireland's Belfast News reported that rain enhancement had been carried out for the first time in England. The article states, Rain was manufactured in England last week by bombing clouds with solid carbon dioxide. This was revealed by Imperial Chemical Industries, Limited, ICI, of Billingham, County Durham, who conducted the experiment in cooperation with the Air Ministry aka, the MOD, the Meteorological Office, aka the Met Office, and the RAF, whose personnel have named the process, Operation Witch Doctor. In an attempt to break the recent drought on Tees side, where industries had to reduce their water supplies, I, C, I, decided to experiment, using, dry cold. The name is their own trade name for solid carbon dioxide. When cloud formations were suitable, dry cold was sent from Billingham to the RAF station at Middleton St. George. There it was loaded into a container, fitted in a Wellington bomber. Three flights were made of dry cold was seeded into clouds at 10,000 feet, west of the Pennines. A ground observer reported a moderate shower five minutes later, at the position predicted. A 2022 Freedom of Information request revealed that ICI requested the usage of its dry cold product in the northeast of England as a drought prevention measure. Whilst also threatening to close down its factory in Tees, due to the drought, that produced dry cold, thereby causing unemployment in the area. In other words I see I tried to blackmail the UK government into purchasing and using its product, or the product producing factory would close, causing unemployment in the area. Project Cumulus Operation Witch Doctor, 
operated between 1949 and 1952 as a government initiative to investigate weather manipulation for rain enhancement. The project carried out by the RAF was accused of creating the Linmouth flood in August 1952 when 250 times the normal amount of rainfall for August fell over North Devon. 34 people died in the floods and extensive property damage occurred. A Freedom of Information report sourced by the former Lewis MP, Norman Baker, in 2001 showed a denial by the RAF that Cumulus Witch Doctor was responsible for the flood. But the RAF did state that if the rain enhancement activity occurred at the time, then it was outside of the remit of Project Cumulus which essentially states then that the flood was probably caused by weather modification activities but the activity was not an official or disclosed part of Cumulus or any other undisclosed project or operation also known as an accidental truth. Rain Enhancement, 1955 In October 1955, the Yorkshire Observer reported that a rain enhancement experiment had failed due to a lack of suitable clouds for seeding. The experiment carried out by the government's Air Ministry Department, which controlled the affairs of the RAF and was dissolved in 1964 after being replaced by the Ministry of Defence, MOD was implemented on Salisbury Plain and was witnessed by 40 members of the press. It was to be a demonstration of the rainmaking technique known as silver iodide cloud seeding. The article states, one ounce of silver iodide was released which creates millions of ice crystals. The crystals rise without smell and are invisible to the eye. The assistant director of the physical research department at the UK's Met Office, Mr. B. C. V. Body also stated the great problem is to find out exactly how high the crystals go. The RAF assisted with the experiment by releasing barrage balloons with equipment to monitor the contents of the atmosphere. Five cloud seeding generators were placed in a line across Salisbury Plain covering an area extending over 20 miles. Mr. Oddie, from the Met Office commented, Sooner or later commercial rainmaking is bound to come to the UK and the government will have to decide how much control it is going to exercise. 1956 to 1959. In April 1956, the Meteorological Research Committee, MRC, released its first report carried out by its cloud seeding panel, CSP. They recommended that weather modification should be continued at the Salisbury Plain site but not rolled out in other areas such as the requested weather modification in the northeast of England. The CSP advised that the technologies offered are not more beneficial than harmful as a drought prevention measure. The conclusions were accepted by the MRC and plans to carry out weather modification over the Pennines were cancelled. In February 1957, the Air Ministry, MOD, announced via the press media that ground-based weather modification generator activity on Salisbury Plain would be temporarily paused due to the speculation that the cloud seeding was responsible for flooding in the Thames Valley region. Weather modification activities were resumed soon after and Mr. Oddie of the Met Office released statistical analysis in 1959 with his conclusions of the three-year trials. 1984, Scotland In September 1984 the Scotsman newspaper reported that the Strathclyde and the Dumfries and Galloway regions in Scotland were offered weather modification as a drought mitigation technique by the USA-based company, Colorado International Corporation. The Colorado-based company stated it would cost £50,000 for 10 days of weather modification via silver iodide cloud seeding. The deputy director of water for the Strathclyde region said in response that the council had taken note of the offer but were in that moment, not willing to take them up on the offer. The director of water from the Dumfries and Galloway region claimed the drought in their region was at crisis level and they would look at the cloud sea. 1984 to the present day. Regarding weather modification, approximately from 1962 to 1984 and onwards, there is zero information available that would suggest it has been carried out. The UK is not the most forthcoming with data in this issue and it is likely any weather modification activity carried out would be classified or kept out of view of the UK public due to the backlash the government would face. The Guardian newspaper reported in 2015 that the London-based, luxury travel company, Oliver's Travels were offering a weather modification service to provide blue skies for parties and weddings. The service costs 100,000 US dollars. 
At the end of 2023 the UK's Met Office announced that 2023 was the second warmest year ever in the UK since records began. This is obviously a complete lie. All gardeners, flower growers, and vegetable growers will confirm this for you. If you ask flower growers or allotment holders when their seeds germinated in 2023 they will tell you it was at the end of May. Normally, seeds can be germinated and usually are at the end of March. This provides nearly three months of growth, instead of three weeks, before the summer solstice when plants go into the flowering fruiting period for another three or four months. In 2023 it rained daily except for the first three weeks of June. 2023 was cold, wet and a grower's nightmare. It was not the second war. Climate modification. The UK's climate modification interests and history span across various fields. There is an ionospheric heater in Wales which is a NERC MST facility operating in association with the University of Aberystwyth. There have also been various climate modification experiments which mostly come to light after the event has taken place. The wider public are not informed of these experiments beforehand due to the backlash that is and has been received. 2008-2009 In October 2009 the Labour MP for Sale Oak, Birmingham, Lynn Jones asked the Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change, what geoengineering research had been funded by the government covering the period 2008-2009 for the purpose of combating climate change. Joan Ruddock, the Minister of State for the Department of Energy and Climate Change informed the House that the DECC office had financed a small amount of modelling work into the environmental consequences of several geoengineering options, including injecting sulphate aerosols into the stratosphere and encouraging low-level cloud development to increase regional reflectivity. 2009-2010 In October 2010 the Conservative MP for Warrington South, David Mowat asked the Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change what the DECC policy is on the use of geoengineering to combat the effects of climate change and what funding has been provided for such activities in 2009-2010. The DECC Minister of State, Gregory Barker stated that DECC recognized the role geoengineering could have in the future and that research is needed to understand the risks and benefits of the technologies involved. The DECC department provided £136,000 to the Met Office Hadley Centre for Computer Modelling to investigate the impacts of injecting aerosols into the stratosphere. 2010, the Regulation of Geoengineering The Science and Technology Committee Report in March 2010 the House of Commons, Science and Technology Committee released its report titled, The Regulation of Geoengineering, the fifth report of session 2009-2010. The Science and Technology Committee is appointed by the House of Commons to examine the expenditure, administration and policy of the Government Office for Science. The following MPs sat on the committee at the time of the report's release, Phil Willis, Liberal Democrat, Harrogate and Nesbarath, who was the chair, Dr. Roberta Blackman Woods, Labour, City of Durham, Tim Boswell, Conservative, Daintree, Ian Causey, Labour, Brig and Gould, Nadine Dorries, Conservative, Mid Bedfordshire, Dr. Evan Harris, Liberal Democrat, Oxford West and Abingdon, Dr. Brian Iden, Labour, Bolton South East, Gordon Marston, Labour, Blackpool South, Dr. Doug Naismith, Labour, Bristol Northwest, Dr. Bob Spink, Independent, Castle Point, Ian Stewart, Labour, Eccles, Graham Stringer, Labour, Manchester, Blackley, Dr. Desmond Turner, Labour, Bright. Key highlights from the report state that although some geoengineering techniques could be included in existing legislation, techniques such as solar radiation management stratospheric aerosol injection require that new regulatory arrangements will have to be developed. This has by 2024 not occurred and should be considered along with the statement by the Met Office in the 1950s, regarding whether modification, that the government will have to exercise control of the technologies. The UK government has failed to introduce, over a 75-year period, any kind of standalone weather and climate modification regulation. Such regulation means the public are informed before activities are carried out including the right to respond and environmental impact reports are attained.
Currently, as long as basic regulations relating to flight safety such as giving a notice to airmen or confirming what is distributed from platforms falls to the ground within five years to avoid the buildup of pollutants in the atmosphere are complied with, you can pretty much do what you want regarding weather and climate modification in the UK. The Science and Technology Committee report states that the public should be involved with the decision-making process and creation of regulation and it should not be left to the government, alone, to decide what happens. Over a six-year period between 2016 and 2022 efforts were made by members of the public to introduce standalone weather and climate modification legislation via a white paper to be introduced into Parliament via a judicial review over decisions already taken by the government which included the reinforcing statements by the Met Office in the 50s and the Science and Technology Committee in 2010. When this reached the High Court of Appeal in London, the complainant was threatened with a civil restraint order by the High Court forcing them to cease and desist in the case. As mentioned, no regulation currently exists in the UK. 2010 SPICE Stratospheric Particle Injection for Climate Engineering In September 2011, Cambridge University announced in a press statement that the SPICE geoengineering experiment would be carried out in collaboration with the universities of Bristol, Edinburgh and Oxford together with Marshall Aerospace. The project began in October 2010. The UK government funded experiment, which those of you that have followed David Keith's or Make Sunset's activity will recognize, consists of using balloons or gondolas to distribute sunlight reflective materials into the stratosphere. MSM articles explained the experiment. The independent newspaper reported in October 2011 how the project could result in 20 balloons, combined to equal the size of Wembley Stadium, being used to distribute particulates at an altitude of 20 kilometers. The experiment was to be carried out in the early part of 2012 near Fakenham, Norfolk on the eastern side of England. Members of the public contacted the RSPB and nature reserves in the area along with local media outlets in Norfolk and within days of those activist activities the project was cancelled. Initially reported in the media in May 2012 as being cancelled due to funding issues from the private investors, it was announced soon after that the project was cancelled due to conflict of interest issues and concerns with the patents being used. No mention was made of the public complaints or objections via awareness-raising activities. The experiment was moved to New Mexico, USA under the management of David Keith, formerly of Harvard, now at Chicago Uni as of 2023, and was carried out as planned in July 2012. According to The Guardian newspaper in August 2018, the SPICE project in the UK was abandoned in 2015 after research showed that geoengineering would have an adverse effect on agriculture. Hugh Hunt, the acting director of the Centre for Climate Repair at Cambridge Uni claimed in the Australian ABC News outlet, in August 2020, that his SPICE project was cancelled due to the Oxford Principles on Geoengineering. 2015 No D Notice Applied on the UK Media A D notice order is when the military or government issue a blackout on a subject in the UK media, forbidding them from covering or reporting on a subject concerned. It is now called a defence and security media advisory. In August 2015, Air Vice Marshal Andrew Val Lance, the Secretary of the Defence and Security Media Advice Committee confirmed that there has never been, nor will there ever be any kind of D notice, whether daily or otherwise given to the media on the subject of geoengineering. 2019-2021, Bath University, the electric charge method. In January 2021 a paper was released titled, A Demonstration of a Remotely Piloted Atmospheric Measurement and Charge Release Platform for Geoengineering, via the American Meteorological Society, AMS, website. It claimed that the electric charge method is an unexplored geoengineering technique for modifying fogs, clouds and rainfall. This is of course a lie as the electric charge method is a well-known technique and has been since the 1960s. It was developed in the 1960s in California, USA and was mentioned in their state funding report for weather modification, albeit as a primitive trial. Ionospheric heaters are also classified within the electric charge method and scientists in the UAE have also worked on developing the method in 2017. In May 2021, Bath Uni announced that its drone, UAV, based electric charge method platform had been tested in the UAE.
A FOIA response from Bath Uni in 2022 regarding their proof-of-concept tests carried out over the Bristol area confirms the legislation arguments mentioned earlier in this video. When the UAV flights took place in 2019 there was no requirement to make any public notifications or to obtain permission from any government organization. Due to the size and flight status of the drone, the Civil Aviation Authority did not require any formal notification. Whilst there was no legal requirement to do so, the Uni of Bath notified Bristol Airport of its flights and obtained permission from the airport to fly. Further permissions were sought and obtained from relevant landowners. The public were not informed about the experiments beforehand as there are no legal requirements obligating the university into public notifications. 2022 in March 2023 an interview was published by the MIT Technology Review website entitled, Researchers Launched a Solar Geoengineering Test Flight in the UK. The experiment, largely designed to test equipment, took place despite deep concerns about the technology. The project lead, Andrew Lockley, was clearly fuming due to information about his experiment being released. The experiments took place in September 2022 and involved releasing sulfur dioxide from a high-altitude balloon, essentially copying the previously mentioned methods in this video. The Stratospheric Aerosol Transport and Nucleation, the, Satan, experiments were released from a launch site in Buckinghamshire in southeast England. No public notifications were given beforehand. You'll notice the lack of public notification to do with experiments carried out in the UK. This is because of the public backlash as proven by the SPICE experiment. David Keith, a leading geoengineering advocate, stated after a cancelled experimental attempt in Sweden during 2020-2021 that it is harder to find funding for projects due to the negative response from the public about such experiments. I hope you enjoyed this summary of UK activity. Please donate if you are able to, via the links provided. Source links are provided in the information section of this video for the info mentioned in this video. I'll be back again soon with another summary of activity. The next one will be about Australian, Tasmanian and New Zealand activity. Until then, look after yourselves, see you next time.